Let's talk about building secure web applications with NET. A critical part of that is understanding authentication and authorization. Simply put, authentication is like showing your ID to prove who you are. You're basically telling the application, hey, it's me, and here's my proof. Now imagine you're at a club and you show your ID to get in. That's authentication. You've proven you are who you say you are. Authorization, on the other hand, is like having a VIP pass. It determines what you're allowed to do once you're inside the club, like accessing special areas. In the digital world, web applications use these processes to make sure only the right people access sensitive information. It's a bit like having bouncers for your app, ensuring everything stays safe and sound. Think of it like this. Authentication verifies your identity, while authorization determines your permissions. It's a powerful duo that helps protect your application and its users. Before diving into the code, let's set up our .NET environment. It's like preparing your kitchen before baking a cake. First, install the .NET SDK on your computer. Download the latest version from the official .NET website. Once you have that, you're good to go. Choose your development environment like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. And don't forget about Nugget, your package manager. It's like a grocery store for your .NET projects. Now comes the exciting part implementing authentication in your net application. Think of it as setting up a security checkpoint at the entrance of your application. You can choose from various authentication methods, each with its pros and cons. One common approach is using ASP.NET Core Identity. It's a robust and flexible membership system that handles user registration, login, password management, and more. To get started, you'll need to configure identity services in your application's startup class. This tells your application how to handle authentication requests. Next, you'll create user interface elements for login and registration. Think of these as the forms where users enter their credentials. You can customize these to match your application's look and feel. Finally, you'll use the attribute to protect sensitive parts of your application. This attribute acts like a VIP pass, ensuring that only authenticated users can access specific pages, controllers, or actions. Section 4. Implementing Authorization in Your Net Application Once you've set up authentication, it's time to fine-tune access control with authorization. Authorization defines what each user can and cannot do within your application. ASP Net Core offers role-based, policy-based, and claims-based approaches. Role-based authorization assigns users to groups with specific permissions. Policy-based authorization allows custom rules based on various factors. Claims-based authorization uses user claims to make decisions. Section 5. Testing Your Authentication and Authorization Implementation Testing is crucial to ensure your authentication and authorization mechanisms work as expected. It's like testing the locks on your doors and windows to ensure everything is secure. You can test your setup manually by logging in with different user accounts and trying to access restricted areas. If you're redirected to the login page or encounter an authorization error, that's a good sign. For more comprehensive testing, consider using automated tests. Unit tests allow you to test individual components of your authentication and authorization logic, while integration tests verify that everything works together seamlessly. Remember, thorough testing is essential for maintaining a secure application. Section 6. Best Practices and Tips for Secure Net Applications Congratulations on implementing authentication and authorization in your net application. You've taken a significant step towards building a more secure application, but the journey doesn't end there. Security is an ongoing process, and it's essential to follow best practices and stay informed about potential threats. Always use HTTPS to encrypt communication between the client and server, protecting sensitive data during transmission. Never store sensitive information such as passwords in plain text. Instead, use robust hashing algorithms to secure them. And when working with databases, be mindful of SQL injection vulnerabilities. Use parameterized queries or object relational mappers, or ORMs, to prevent these attacks. Finally, stay up to date with the latest security patches and updates for your net framework and any third-party libraries you're using. By staying vigilant and following these best practices, you can help keep your .NET applications secure and your users' data safe.